Son y hermanos. Thursday, the 27th of June 2019, and the time is 11:39 a.m. Um, and I'll just get you to introduce yourself, please. Uh, my name is Dr. Green. I am uh, a 69-year-old uh, retiree. Cool. Um, and before we carry on any part of this conversation, just letting you know that you've come to the Wellington Station uh, voluntarily. So at any stage you want to stop talking to me or you want to leave, you're free to do so. So just let me know. We can make that. Make it happen, essentially. Um, and right. before we go any further, I also got to review your rights, um, like with the last conversation that we had. Um, so you have the right to remain silent. You do not have to make any statement. Anything you say will be recorded and may be given in evidence in court. You have the right to speak with a lawyer without delay and in private before deciding whether to answer any questions. And police have a list of lawyers you may speak to for free. You understand those rights, Mr. Green? I do. The reason why I read your rights is because of the nature of the conversation we're about to have. It goes along the lines of the sale and supply of cannabis. Um, and also, I've printed out a copy of that's referring back to the Stuff News article that was published some time ago. So, we met. Oh, sorry, you came to the Wellington Police Station. This is going back to the 13th of June this year, 2019. Um, we came up to the level two interview room. We had a conversation. Again, your your views on cannabis, um, your desire to have cannabis made legal without the whole referen referendum process. Um, you told me about uh, previous involvement and the runnings of uh, cannabis clubs, clubs or club in Auckland, um, and your previous interaction with police your views on how police should, I guess, act or um, police action in regards to what's currently going on here uh, at 38 Harney Street, North Victoria, Wellington. Um, I put a, a police views out there that what's happening at 38 Harney Street uh, in North Victoria, Wellington needs to stop and that we are happy to assist in the, the seizure of that operation. Along the lines of that we can take, say, cannabis material or equipment um, off your hands we can assist in that in happening. Um, and also that if the operation at 38 Hunter Street wasn't to stop, that there may be police, um, further police action. Um, so you messaged me, uh, this was on Thursday the 20th of June uh, this year 2019, um, you contacted me wanting to arrange another time to meet here at the Wellington Station to have another conversation. Um, I responded to that message. This was on Tuesday uh, this week and we arranged to meet today. It's the last time that we had a talk. I, I gathered your views, your political views on cannabis, um, your desire of cannabis to be made legal and that the current law stops people of cannabis cultures to, you made reference to that a couple of times, uh, stops you guys from having a voice or an opinion. Um, I also, so I have a number of questions that I still need to kind of get, you know, look further into. Um, not quite how I expected it to be unfolding today, but you can ask a question, so I'm not sure I'm ready to answer any. Okay. And as I've already outlined before, if, if you want to stop this conversation at any point, you should do so. Uh, sure. As for your rights, don't answer any questions that I ask of you. My concern is that we're getting all formal here, and what we should be doing is much less formal. I'm happy to be. Uh, that we are being recorded mm -hmm. uh, so that there are no misunderstandings uh, in the future. But there is much more going on than just a question of what might be happening in Harvey Street. And I am concerned that I am 
sitting, having a conversation with a detective, and that I'm not sitting here having a conversation with your police department public relations office. Firstly, I'm not, I'm not a detective, I've outlined that one now. Constable. I'm sorry. I'm not a, not a I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm misunderstood. What is happening with cannabis around the country, politically and in practice, um, there has been a major shift of the way um, people are talking about cannabis, the way people are dealing with cannabis, the way police are interacting with people over cannabis. And I understand how the formation of a club such as has been established is going to cause some angst for the police department. We understand that there cannot be change without pushing the barrier, without pushing the issue. We also understand that times are different today than what they were when I opened the last club in Auckland over 10 years ago. And that it is much more practical for the police to recognise that these are changing times and that we should be working together with how we might coexist. Let's talk about how the police should be reacting to what might be there, because if we get to the right position, I'm very comfortable for the police to be coming in on a regular basis without warrant, having a look, being part of the solution to the issue, and you're saying to me, you want to talk about the criminal investigation that you're conducting. And that's not what I'm about. I'm not here to talk about a criminal investigation. Yeah. So what, what are I'm you asking, saying to so, me? So what I'm going to do, Mr. Red, is I'm just going to ask you some questions, okay? Whatever I'm going to ask you questions. What okay. you're saying is that this is not the start of a criminal investigation. You just want to know what's going on there to ascertain whether or not you should leave us alone or something along those lines, is that where you're coming from? Look, I don't want to be cute about this. I want this to, to work. I want to have a relationship with the police where I'm not looking over my shoulder and having to protect myself from arrest. If we're able to have that sort of open conversation, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. All right, so, so you spell it out yeah. how you... I'm just going to start drilling some questions up there, okay? So we're going to, I'm going to talk to you about the premises of 38 Harding Street, Crown Victoria, Wellington. Um, so who's the owner of that building, 38 Harding Street? Um, it's a company as our landlord. Okay. Do you know the person? I, 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 I deal with a representative from that company, yes. Yeah. Who's, who's that? Um, I know it was Mark. Um, I would have to come up with a surname. I've dealt with him. Um, I met him. I told him. Uh, it was just advertised on trade mm -hmm. as a premises uh, for rent, uh, short term. Yeah. And what um, what company is he represented? Uh, represented or? Uh, the owner. He's he is uh, part of the owner company. I didn't use an agent, as I said. It was a right. Um, I would have to look up the, the records to yeah. get his details. Um, I told him that I wanted premises. He knew who I was. Um, yeah. I have. Because yeah. are you on um, like a lease or contract? Uh, yes, I have. I have a, um, a tenancy agreement. Yeah. How much and, do you pay for rent? Uh, it's one thousand five hundred dollars a week. Okay. Yeah. Um, all inclusive, uh, inclusive of rates and insurance. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and apparently that is less than half what the previous tenants were paying more than a year ago. Just, just he knows he knows that I am a campaigner for cannabis law reform, mm -hmm. 
and that I needed a place to have gatherings of people from around the country, um, and that uh, and that's exactly what's been happening. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, and we run it as a club. We, we have a, um, a security officer on the door to ensure that uh, ages are checked uh, because we don't want to deal with children. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, yeah, that's, that's probably where I'm going to just lead on to next. Um, but just before we kind of look at that, those are really the questions around the premises of 38 Hanya Street. Um, you mentioned that Mark, his Mark from the representative company at 38 Hanya Street, has he been back? To I have not been renting the place. He hasn't, he hasn't turned he up at any stage. A big event. Has he turned up at any stage at the rental property? Or? Um, um, he delivered some equipment after we had moved into the place, mm -hmm. but not since we've been having. Friends from around the country come visit. No, yeah. he, if a police officer was wandering around the city 10 or 20 years ago and came across somebody in a dark alley smoking a joint, they would be patted down, they would be, if they had anything on them, they'd be arrested, they'd be taken to the cells at least overnight, appear in court tomorrow. Today, a police officer would probably not even speak to such a person. And if it was, if they did, it would be to go do that somewhere else. Now, everybody knows that that's what's been happening over the last 10 to 20 years. And the law hasn't changed. What has changed is the use of police discretion. In fact, there's a law that allows for police discretion for offences up to two years. And, and this was a big part of our conversation that we had last time. And you're completely right. I mean, like, the, to, to a certain extent, there is police discretion. So, but for tell me... Tell me, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but this is the key issue here. If you tell me that our premises will receive a premises discretion when it comes to cannabis, then I will talk over it. Well, I think stemming from our they last cannot. time, I, stemming from our last time that we had a conversation, I put it quite clearly out there is that sale and supply of cannabis from your premises at 30 Ohania Street cannot continue and that we can assist in that activity seizing along the lines of taking cannabis product and equipment from you and steps to stop the, um, the cannabis cult from operating um, and that if, it doesn't, if there hasn't been any stopping of activity there, there then police um, action may result. That's that I put it quite clearly out there. What I'm trying to get for you is information and then we can go along the lines of maybe trying to take some steps further is how we go along the lines of uh, we No, can't, because what you're asking thing. me to do is to help you close it down and I'm not going to do anything to help you close our club. It's not going to happen. So what I'm so here so to you, talk no, to no, no, you. If you tell me, it's saying it's not going to happen. So what's going to happen from here on? You leave here, and you tell me what's going to happen at the yeah. Hardy Street. Uh, it will be used for meetings for people from around the country who want to set up a club. We have a program that's been that's about to be launched. Forty two. The Club 42. We're going to have 42 clubs in 42 weeks. Because we cannot allow things to continue as they've been. We understand it is against the law. 
But we also believe that it is time for police to recognise that it's a new world. And that's what that the, the old the, the way... The referendum that's um, coming No, up. it's not. That no, it's, it's not. Happens. No, it's not. That is not the way. That is not the way forward. That is, but that's your opinion. Right? No. That's an invention of politicians because they're running away from the bullshit that they've been spouting for years. And we should be having I'm this not, debate I'm with gonna, politicians and not you, with you. Mr Green, I'm going to interrupt you again. This is still going along the lines of what, we've got, what we talked about last time. Yeah, what's what, what's your, your process along the lines of that? We do have protocols. Mm -hmm. We do have rules. There are no standard rules or laws. We make up our own. Starting with the minimum age. We have no obligation to do this. It's an illegal substance, an illegal activity. So we make up rules that we think should apply. I'm not going to give you one of those. I'm not going to give you the details of our rules because you are conducting a criminal investigation and that makes it extremely difficult for me. So you mentioned you do check age of your club members? We do require proof of age. We have and signed how up. How do, you, how do you do that? We have signed up. Mm -hmm. If you look under 25, produce ID. Exactly the same way as anybody running a bar in town oh, or yeah. a nightclub. Um, they have trained people that check ID. Do you look along the lines of state of intoxication or the, under the influence of, of drugs before they come into your premises? Um, if anybody's under the influence of anything, they're not um, admitted. Particularly alcohol we're looking for. If anybody smells of alcohol mm. or is acting drunk, they cannot come into the premises. Yeah. Do you have anything along the lines of first aid for your club members? Say that again, please. Do you have anything along the lines of first aid or medical care for your club members at 38 Honey Street? Um, in the nature of what we have a, a, a first aid kit. Cool. Yeah, this is um, one. Yeah. And we, we know uh, people among our members that are medically trained. Um, as in nurses and such like, we, we've identified those people. We also, in the cannabis culture, seek to take care of the people in the cannabis culture and that if they are using unsafe practices, yeah. so such as mixing their cannabis with tobacco, which is a very unsafe practice. So if we talk about like keeping um, the club members um, safe, as mentioned before, driving to the venue, 38 Hunter Street, home. Is there anything along the lines of that when it comes to like travelling in vehicles to and from Hunter Street? Is there any um, processes or? Yeah. We don't have that many people that drive to the premises, and those that do, um, I am pleasantly surprised when I am sitting talking with a group to find that usually there is somebody there that is not consuming because they're the driver. Right. And it's still within the date on there. So unless they're actually photoshopping, um, then it's an accurate photo that says they're a current member. Um, our people feel more comfortable doing that for obvious reasons. Uh, we've had membership lists in the past um, and they end up in the hands of the police and people get nervous about those sorts of things. Um, you have to understand that there is a 
a great rift between the police and cannabis consumers that needs to be overcome in the future. I'm so, hoping that we can start doing that now. So what, what records do you guide, do you or you, the, uh, any other mem uh, people running the um, operation at 38 Honey Street, what, what records do you guys hold? About members? About members, about uh, the daiquiri in general? Oh, uh, no, that's a, that's a difficult thing to answer because, um, because we're a temporary operation and we're like a pop-up shop, if you will, okay? And what we're in the process of doing in a number of these issues is there are refinements of our operations manual. We are the model. There are um, a number of other clubs that are in the process of being formed around the country and we're in conversation with them as we develop um, the processes that are required. We expect, in due course, uh, cannabis to be legal for not-for-profits to operate. That's our political goal. And that means that corporates, the big money that's involved in the corporates, uh, will not have a piece of the cannabis industry in this country. And that's a political goal that we're pursuing. And our method of doing that is to have a place that we can meet on a regular basis whilst we develop our rules. Now, this is not just something that just started. We've been doing this for a long time. Mm, yeah. uh, so I've been doing it for a long time. Yeah, yeah. That's why I came out of retirement to come back and do this because mm -hmm. politically uh, we're in fear of the referendum losing. We're in fear of more of the same continuing, more of the same from police, more arrests, more nonsense. My friend being arrested last night, people yeah. arrested last week. It's happening constantly. We can, and we can. We can't be part of the public got, debate. Oh, yeah, I understand. So we can talk about your your opinions and thoughts and what's going on um, in the past and what may happen in the future um, at the outsiders. But let's talk about the here and now. Um, the reasons yeah. why we're having this recorded um, conversation. Um, so the, the subject that we can seem to be kind of tiptoeing around um, about what's going on at 38 Hania Street is cannabis itself. The sale, the supply and the consumption that I believe is going that is happening at 38 Hania Street. We seem to be some time around that top the subject. So when it comes to cannabis, what's happening there, the um, process and storing of things like say the the cash that may be ex exchanging in hands um, and the cannabis uh, storage and stuff like that. What's what's the process around that? This your storage side of things when it comes to money and cannabis at the United industry. I can't make a comment on that. Okay. Alright, so how much do you supply, uh, how much cannabis do you supply to your club members? Um, I can't answer that. That's a, a, I mean, apart from anything, that's a, um, 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 a silly question because it's not answerable in any in any way. How how much do I supply? I mean, that's not. So say club member turns up um, tonight at the dictatory. Mm -hmm. um, they want to have some cannabis when they come to see say yourself. Oh or no, you're misunderstanding. You're misunderstanding what a cannabis club is about. Cannabis clubs are about people who are part of the cannabis culture. Um, coming together in a safe place. 
It is not about running a shop, a tinny shop, or a drug shop. Well, if we look, if we look at the, the, uh, the stuff article, um, it, it does say that there is um, the selling of cannabis and that people uh, can consume on site. That's from that stuff article. Whether or not you want to question the validity of that, um, it is out there, like I said, you, you mentioned that it is a, a personal, uh, it is a statement that's been put up there. So obviously these are questions that are going to stem from that. Um, so I believe it's a fair question to ask that does some, the club member come into the directory and if they feel like they want to have some cannabis, can they purchase there? Can they consume um, There are people that come along um, with their own. It's a cannabis club. Yeah. And, and the cannabis club do you supply club members with um, cannabis? Um, it would be silly to think that there was no cannabis consumed in the cannabis club. I think that it um, All I can just say is that to keep lines of communication open, I mean, like that would essentially hopefully lead to a positive outcome. Oh, I do want to keep lines of communication open. I do not want to get arrested. I want clubs to own the cannabis industry that's about to be launched on the, on the people. I want to be part of that and not be sitting in a jail somewhere. Well, let's, let's talk about at least the safety of what's going on okay. um, to your club members and your staff at, uh, at 3800 Street, the Dactory. So, what's the process that you have in plan um, for potential standovers or what is strong handing or tax, taxing from, say, um, criminals, criminal organisation, organisations like gangs? Um, what, what processes do you have in place for that, some of the things? If you've experienced anything like that since you've been operating? Uh, the answer is no. We've experienced none of that. For the last 20 years, I have been travelling the country. I am extremely well known by people in the cannabis culture. And there are people that are in the cannabis culture that are also members of gangs. It does not make them a bad person. It makes them a cannabis um, a person like me. I have yet to come across anybody who thinks that the law should continue as it is. People who consume cannabis, regardless of your background and whether you're a gang member or not. I'm not talking about that side of things. What I'm talking about is that what, what makes you we think don't, you're We a don't person have person that's anything that's of value to anybody to come bursting into our place. So along the lines of any money or cannabis or drugs at the property? There is um, nothing of great value. We are very careful about how we operate. You will be aware, because we talked about it last time, that the coffee shops in the Netherlands are able to sell cannabis because they have a permit from police. Not approval from government, the police permit it. And they permit it as long as there is a limited amount of cannabis on the premises at any given time. And it works quite well in the Netherlands because the police took some time ago an enlightened view to overcome the political bullshit that was going on in their government at the time. In light of everything that's going on in this country now around cannabis, we to, hope the same thing's going yeah, to happen. And again, we're starting to... And I'm not going to change from that, and I'm not going to give you assistance about 
what we physically do there because that gathering of evidence to arrest me. So I say once again, talk to your superiors, tell them this needs to go further and I'm going to talk in publicly, openly about what we've been talking about and I'm going to be calling on the police to do what I'm asking you. Right, let's, to do. let's talk about the whole legal, your legal, like, the legal side of things. Um, so what are, we've covered over and you've probably mentioned it a number of times but I want to cover it off again. So just let's, so explain to me your knowledge um, of, of the current law around cannabis, um, sale and sale and supply of cannabis. What your, your legal knowledge of what's, what, what law is? I am familiar with the contents of the Misuse of Drugs Act 1975. That law has been used many times to send me to jail. I am familiar with that law. Mm -hmm. yep. well, let's talk about the previous times that you've been arrested um, and charges and stuff like that in the past, so... Why do we need to talk about that? Sorry? Why do we need to talk well, about that? We're, we're talking about all sorts of things. Okay, well, well you so know, I, I, I've done this. About. I've done these things because as a latecomer to cannabis, I was 39 years old when I tried it for the first time. My son was 21 and he introduced me to it. Since that time, I have learned far more about cannabis than I ever thought I would know, and the law is wrong. And when the law is wrong, there is an obligation on good citizens to object to bad laws, and that's what I do. I've been responsible for law changes in the past, Saturday shopping, casinos, and I'm going to be part of this law change also. But it's not going to be whilst we have a police force that forget that there is change coming. You cannot continue to treat us as though it's 1975. Okay. Alright, um, Mr. Green, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have uh, a very, very um, short break. I'm just going to pop in and make sure that everything's all good with our recordings. Um, okay. Again, with our monitoring, it's um, still going to be recording you, um, both visually and um, with audio. Um, yep. So just bear with me for a minute. I'll be back soon. Um, date, oh sorry, time is 12.42, um, Thursday, 27th of June 2019. That's 12.42, June 2019.